the battle over who's going to become the House Speaker is now over. But I think that what that whole kerfuffle demonstrated is that the Republican Party really is factionalized in more ways than many of us had previously thought. It's not just the far right Freedom Caucus loons against the so-called moderate Republicans. And I put moderate in quotes because I don't think any Republican is a moderate. But either way, it's not just far right versus right. It's now also anti-McCarthy versus pro-McCarthy Republicans, and some of these insults are absolutely going to leave some lasting bruises. And it's not just that they said mean things towards each other during the battle. They're still insulting each other. Now, that's not to say that some Republicans haven't tried to mend their relationships. For example, Matt Gates and Mike Rogers, the individual wearing the toupee who lunged at Matt Gates, who was physically restrained, they've kind of buried the hatchet. But others, I think it's going to take a lot more time for them to mend their relationships. So there's an interview by the Associated Press with Lauren Boebert and something that she said about Marjorie Taylor Greene prior to the speakership vote is so ruthless, so, so mean, but true that you can almost see the effect that those words had on Marjorie Taylor Greene. And let me give you an example of that. But first, let's get to what Lauren Boebert said about Marjorie Taylor Greene. She says, I have been asked to explain Marjorie Taylor Greene's beliefs on Jewish space lasers, on why she showed up to a white supremacist conference. I'm just not going to go there, Boebert said over the phone, as she rode in a car winding through the high canyons near her hometown of Silt before the speakership vote. She wants to say all these things and seem unhinged on Twitter. So be it. Now, I have a lot of thoughts about this because what she's saying is unquestionably true, but it's ironic because, I mean, it's Lauren Boebert who's saying this. She also likes to behave in a very unhinged way, and I'll link to that interview down below. The whole premise of that interview, at least from her standpoint, is that even though she almost lost her election, she's not going to change her way. She's still going to be as firebrand as she previously was. So while she is calling Marjorie Taylor Greene unhinged, she too is unhinged. So she has no self-awareness whatsoever. But it's evident that Marjorie Taylor Greene, now that she has lost a lot of, I guess, clout, you can call it, with some of the members of the far right, including neo-Nazis like Nick Fuentes, who she was previously aligned with, as Bobo pointed out in that interview, now she's trying to do a little bit of correction. And she's trying to portray herself as somebody who is more moderate, so individuals like Lauren Boebert don't call her unhinged. And I think that Marjorie Taylor Greene, somebody who's hyper aware of what people are saying about her, saw what Lauren Boebert said. Um, and I don't know when the date of that interview with Boebert took place compared to the interview that we're going to see with Marjorie Taylor Greene. But either way, Marjorie Green is aware of what people are saying about her, and she's trying to make it seem as if she's more moderate, more reasonable now. And I say that because in this Fox News interview, she denounced QAnon publicly so. Let's listen. And well, just, just to deal with one bit of history, the Democrats stripped you of your committee assignments after you were right. elected. That was raw politics. Mm -hmm. But in fairness, didn't you also say around that period that you had been a follower of QAnon conspiracy theories and you had rethought this and you were no longer uh, influenced by the group? Well, like a lot of people today, I had easily gotten sucked into some things I'd seen on the internet, um, but that was dealt with quickly early on. I never campaigned on those things. That was not something I believed in. That's mm -hmm. not what I ran for Congress on. So those are so far in the past. All right. Um, mm. So she got sucked into an internet thing that was happening, except... You can't just say that. You can't just say, oh, well, that's in the past. I got sucked into this conspiracy theory. That's behind me now. We're moving forward. Marjorie, you're a member of Congress. You fell for one of the dumbest conspiracy theories ever concocted. I might have more respect for you if you were a flat earther. So you can't just say, well, yeah, I fell for that and I moved on. We have to have a serious conversation about whether or not you're capable of having the, the amount of power that you have. Again, you are a sitting member of Congress. You have a vote that will affect millions of people around the country and the world, not just your constituents. So you can't just say, yeah, I'm dumb enough to have fallen for that, but I'm going to keep my position of power. But this is her trying to pretend as if she is moderating. So that way, insults like the one that Bobo threw at her don't stick as hard. But the problem is she is speaking out of both sides of her mouth because on one hand, while she's publicly disavowing QAnon, she's also saying things like this in the same interview. And listen carefully, because she's going to be asked whether or not she believes Joe Biden was legitimately elected. She's going to basically 
brush that aside and not even answer the question, but the host doesn't pick up on her disingenuous maneuver here. Let's watch. When things got heated, you said this about Congressman Chip Roy of Texas. He refused to object on January 6th. That's not what our base wanted. So a lot of the people who were backing Kevin McCarthy uh, also didn't vote to certify the Electoral College results for Joe Biden. Um, do you think that's an important thing to the base even today? Oh, it's very important. Well, what I was pointing out is the same people that conservatives were holding up in high esteem don't necessarily have those voting records while they're at the same time criticizing Kevin McCarthy, who does. Right. Kevin McCarthy did object on January 6th, and he's been a top target of the Democrats and the January so 6th committee. So do you believe that Joe Biden is a legitimately elected president? Of course Joe Biden's the president. That's always a silly question. Okay, I wasn't trying to be silly. I was trying to just clarify. Okay. He did not ask you who's the president now. That's the easiest quiz ever. He asked you, did Biden win the presidency legitimately? And you didn't answer that question. And if you uh, notice, this is kind of the go-to answer for election deniers. When you ask them, was Joe Biden legitimately elected? They'll say, of course he's the president, right? But I'm not asking you whether or not you see that he's the president now. We can all see that. But do you believe the election was stolen? So these hosts, these journalists who ask these questions, they need to be more savvy about the way that they word this and they need to push back because what she did there was play loose with the facts. She's essentially tacitly denying that Joe Biden was elected legitimately, but yet in that same interview, she wants to be portrayed as being this reasonable moderate. It's just ridiculous, right? So that's why people like Lauren Boebert are saying she's unhinged. Lauren Boebert is correct, but Lauren Boebert is also unhinged. This entire party is unhinged. Now, going back to Matt Gates, I referenced him earlier in this video. Nancy Mace, she was on the pro-McCarthy side and Matt Gates was on the other side, obviously. Look at what she said in an interview with Face the Nation. So she was asked, is it going to be difficult to work with these folks, given that you've argued with them before? And Nancy Mace also got into a Twitter fight with Marjorie Taylor Greene, but they were on the same side when it came to the McCarthy speaker battle. But Nancy Mace was refreshingly honest, and she admitted that it's going to be really difficult to work with people like Matt Gates, who she views as well, quite frankly, a fraud. The speaker has reportedly given the Freedom Caucus, that ultra conservative faction, uh, a third of the seats on the powerful rules committee, which controls which bills make it to the floor. You've called Matt Gates, one of its members, a political D-lister and a fraud. You've sparred with Marjorie Taylor Greene. I'll show our viewers part of that and let them interpret your meaning. Uh, how are you going to work with these folks to, to get anything done for the American people? It's going to be very difficult. Matt Gates is a fraud. Every time he voted against Kevin McCarthy last week, he sent out a fundraising email. Uh, what you saw last week was a constitutional process diminished by those kinds of political actions. That was really interesting, and I respect her for being so forward with her opinion about Matt Gates because most normal people can see that he's obviously a fraud and what he was doing with the McCarthy speaker battle was grandstanding. But, I mean, this whole party... It's a circus and it's all about show. They're not seriously trying to legislate and create policies. And she goes on to explain that later on in this interview, if you want to watch it, I'll link to it down below, where she explains that like she herself is a forced birther, but they're not voting on policies that are going to reduce the number of abortions. So she floated the idea of expanding access to birth control so you decrease unwanted pregnancies and as a result you decrease the result of uh, uh, the number of abortions. And she says that they're not focused on things like this, so they're not serious about governing. And the Freedom Caucus has essentially taken over the party, and individuals like Kevin McCarthy, Steve Scalise, members of leadership, are forced to kowtow if they want to remain in power because the Freedom Caucus is a large enough number of people in Congress to where they can stop things from getting done. Stop Republicans from getting the speakership, as we saw last week. So either way, I'll admit, I think that all of this Republican infighting and factionalization is really good for the country because the more that they focus on each other, the less they could focus on attacking the working class and marginalized people. So I hope that they keep up the fighting and the insults and uh, we'll see. But I don't think that the bad blood is going to go away anytime soon. I think that this speakership battle is going to leave some lasting wounds but we'll just have to wait and see for sure. But either way, I'm enjoying the show meanwhile.
I'm gonna come. Do not come. 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 Welcome to the come zone. Ah. Come.